Now at 10, an addiction recovery center in Baraboo is closing down, leaving people in the area without a place to go. And after years of delay, the Wisconsin DOT says they're taking another look at a proposed construction project in Stoughton. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 10. Thanks for watching News 3 Now at 10. I'm Amanda Quintana. There will be law enforcement at Poinet Schools tomorrow morning. The district says for a, quote, reassuring effect. This comes after Poinet police say they arrested three kids for terroristic threats. Officers say the school district contacted them yesterday about posts being spread on social media, threatening a school shooting. Through an investigation with the Columbia County Sheriff's Department, officers determined there was no real threat, but arrested the juveniles involved. Officials say there is no danger to the community or students. All scheduled activities will go on as planned. The Point at School District says there will also be support staff on hand for students who may feel uncomfortable tomorrow. Sauk County is soon to be without another addiction resource center. There, just, that's just more than three years after it opened. Tellurian will close. Amy Reed joins us now with what this means to that community. Amy, obviously this is hard for them. Just last year, SSM closed their addiction recovery facility, and Tellurian was supposed to make up for that. Now that none of them are there, the community is left wondering. It's a big problem in our area. It's a big problem. It has been for years. Charlotte Holseman knows the struggle firsthand. For more than 30 years, she's been recovering from an alcohol addiction. And thank God the help was there when I needed it. Because I was pretty low in my life too. And thank the Lord they had, they had the help because I benefited from it greatly. Soon others won't have that, at least not in the same way. After three years trying to fill the need in Sauk County, Tellurian's northern facility will close. The need is very, very much a real issue. It's a, it's a major epidemic. Um, when the, um, the other programs closed, Tellurian was hopeful that we could come in and and, and fill a need. Unfortunately, funding and getting the right qualified people to stay here instead of taking a job in Madison got the best of them. It's frustrating. It makes me angry. It makes me feel like they don't care about our little communities. Charlotte doesn't want to see them go. She knows how bad it's needed by people all over rural Wisconsin. It was a major blow, but I'm getting through it. People like her son. He had a terrible, terrible drug and alcohol program problem and he just couldn't get past it. She's far from the only person in Wisconsin that's dealing with a loss from addiction. And those people say if we want a solution, the burden of recovery needs to sit on a community's shoulders. Just like we rally for a person with cancer, the same mentality should exist with addiction. They're in the fight of their life and everyone around them is in that fight. Addiction is such a lonely disease. You know, there's so many few, so few people around that person uh, fighting that fight with them. Uh, and that's that's been the case for, for as long as I've been in the fight. Farley works with organizations like Tellurian to try and solve this problem too. And even though the group has to move out of Sauk County, they're still figuring out how to help by trying to organize transportation for those struggling in Sauk to come to Madison for treatment. You know, we're working really hard to let people know that just because you live in a rural community doesn't mean you don't deserve the same quality and of care and length of stay that you would if you lived in Dane County or Milwaukee County. Charlotte hopes they come up with something, though preferably a new facility close to home, especially before it's too late for someone else. There's people that are dying and to just leave them, just drop them and leave them, it's not right. It's just not right. until June. If you are interested, Tolorian has a charity golf tournament coming up at the end of the month and we'll put details for that over on our website. All right. Thank you so much, Amy. Let's turn it over to Dana Fulton with your first alert forecast. Dana, not too much sunshine we saw today. Unfortunately, no, Amanda. It was just a little cloudy outside for our Mother's Day. Thankfully, though, we didn't have to deal with any rain showers sliding on through. A little bit of rain in northern Illinois. And uh, we did see some light drizzle spots in the southeast corner of the state. But uh, again, not a lot of rain for us. Most of those showers staying well to the south and east. Right now we're at about 49 in Madison, 48 in Dubuque and in Rockford as well. So temperatures throughout southern Wisconsin really sitting in the same spot for us. And nobody's much higher, much lower. But compared to where we're at this time yesterday, we are a few, few degrees warmer for us, but a four degree jump 
and Madison. Our breeze is going to stay pretty calm tonight, mainly coming from the north northeast and we'll stay in the single digits for our wind speeds. That's the good news. Our high pressure is keeping us pretty quiet and pretty calm. No real wind gusts to take note of either. Looking ahead to your Monday, plan on sunshine and really seasonable temperatures. A pleasant May day ahead will be in the mid 60s for afternoon highs and the rest of the week actually looks pretty mild as far as our temperatures are concerned. We'll take a closer look at what's ahead on our future track in just a few minutes. Amanda. Thank you, Dana. Just into our newsroom tonight, Madison police are investigating reports of shots fired just about 15 minutes ago on the 200 block of Kennedy Heights. That's just off Northport Drive. We'll have the latest on channel 3000.com. This comes as Madison police say shots were fired this afternoon near the basketball courts at Aldo Leopold Park. Witnesses told officers that a group of men got into an argument that ended in gunfire. No one was injured, but a nearby house got hit with a bullet. Police are still looking for suspects. The man accused of planning to build a bomb and attack the UW-Madison campus is set to be sentenced tomorrow. Brian Campbell pleaded no contest in January to second degree reckless endangerment and possession of improvised explosive. Police seized bomb making materials from his apartment last year. He was supposed to be sentenced in February, but prosecutors said they found new evidence of Campbell searching the Internet for instructions on how to make a bomb and drew maps of tunnels on the university's campus. Under the terms of his plea deal, Campbell faces a maximum sentence of three years in prison and eight years extended supervision. Changes may be coming for those in Stoughton and McFarland to commute to Madison. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation is picking back up a study of U.S. Highway 51, originally done in 2013. Our Madeline O'Neill has more from the highway on what you can expect. The Wisconsin DOT US 51 study will extend from the Beltline in Madison through downtown Stoughton here, then east to I-3990. It's okay. It definitely could use a little bit uh, just work done for sure. Autumn Pearl is right on Stoughton's main drag, part of the 18.6 mile stretch of Highway 51. The DOT is looking at for improvements. I love small business. Peter Herbst helps his wife run the boutique and coffee bar. Make coffees and cut hair, do nails, tanning. He's noticed a few rough patches on the way to Madison. But his worried work done on 51 going through town could impact local businesses. You never want to hear about a business close. Especially after a few storefronts have gone vacant. It would make it a lot harder for them too. So yeah, it definitely, it wouldn't improve things having to having the construction. Down the road in McFarland, you'll find the family business, Toddle in Nursery. I know I like the people, and just by that's all I've ever done. Owner Todd Darst remembers hearing about changes coming to Highway 51 years ago. Since then, I haven't heard a word. According to the DOT, progress was halted when a 2013 study wasn't published because of fiscal constraints. In a statement, the DOT says it, along with the Federal Highway Administration, is resuming the study adding that its primary purpose is to develop and evaluate a range of alternatives to address safety and pavement conditions. Safety is where Darst's mind goes. You no, know, with certain intersections down there, you want to be pretty careful. I see the fire trucks and ambulances going that way lots of times, you know. He'd like to see added roundabouts. And if you're trying to get back on 51, depending on which way you're heading, you've got to wait if you know what's good for you. Depending on the study's results, the Transportation Projects Commission could evaluate and approve Highway 51 as a major highway project. If we lost kind of the car traffic, that would obviously hurt us. Still, orange tape and barricades are a ways away. It does need to happen at some point in time. The earliest the DOT anticipates to start construction on this corridor is the early to mid-2020s. Reporting in Stoughton, Madeline O'Neill, News 3 Now. The DOT expects to hold a public meeting on the study in the late summer or early fall. Milton native Abigail Martin has been named the state's newest Alice in Dairyland. She was awarded the position last night during a ceremony in Monroe. Alice in Dairyland is the face of Wisconsin's agricultural industries while working for the State Department of Agriculture. Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke will have more tomorrow on News 3 Now this morning just after 4.30 and 5 o'clock. Coming up on News 3 Now at 10, a performance for the most important women in our lives. How Madison celebrates moms.
After delivering the commencement address to tens of thousands of Badgers at Camp Randall yesterday, J.J. Watt continued spreading smiles. He visited kids at a Madison hospital, including 10-year-old Jacob. His mother posted these on Facebook. Jacob has been receiving treatment for the last seven years, surviving brain cancer and leukemia. His mom thanked Watt for the giggles and for signing a football for him. Oldbrook Bot Botanical Gardens was full of music and moms today, all to celebrate Mother's Day. Mothers and grandmothers spent part of the day dedicated to them, enjoying the annual New Horizons Mother's Day Band concert, along with the scenery in the gardens. Band member Marjorie Marion says performing on Mother's Day has become a tradition for her. It's what I always do on Mother's Day. I've been doing it for 10 years or something, and um, and it's it's very special because all the moms are here. Lots of families are here, and grandmas. The Madison New Horizons Band is part of the International New Horizons Organization, a program dedicated to adult musicians, even those with no experience. The Madison chapter is the second oldest New Horizons Band in the world. It's been a stormy Mother's Day for millions across the eastern half of the country following rounds of rain and severe thunderstorms. It's the worst in the south where they've been slammed by days of torrential rain and widespread flooding. Meg Oliver has the latest. After days of relentless rain, New Orleans looked more like a swamp, closing roads and shutting down public transportation. In Baton Rouge, the storm sent trees crashing onto roofs and caused water to bubble out of sewers. Here in Church Point, Louisiana, flooding shut down neighborhoods. When it floods too bad, we get water in our house. Not too much we can do. Just wait for the water to go down. The storm system started a week ago, drenching multiple states from Texas to Virginia. In waterlogged Stone County, Mississippi, flash floods trapped more than a dozen people in RV parks. The water was going down and all of a sudden it just rose and they just overtook the park. There's nothing more we could do. We all evacuated and got out. I lost everything, sir. I lost everything. Nearby highways were overflowing from torrential rain. In Dolphin Island, Alabama, the storm ripped roofs off buildings. Over in Gulf Shores, Alabama, workers sawed through debris after strong winds toppled trees onto cars at a local zoo. No animals were hurt. In Hillsdale, Mississippi, severe weather derailed a freight train, leaving more than 20 cars bunched together like an accordion. No one was injured. And a tornado touched down outside Norfolk, Virginia, knocking down trees and power lines. The powerful but slow-moving system now stretches from Florida to here in New York City. Rain is expected to drench the Northeast through at least Monday evening. Meg Oliver, CBS News, New York. Well, we managed to avoid the rain over here, Dana, for our moms, but not too much sunshine for them. Unfortunately, yeah, not a lot of sun for us. In fact, looking at this time lapse of downtown, we had a nice sunrise, a little bit of sun early, early in the day. If you're an early riser if for Mother's Day, you're able to get a breakfast early the mo this morning. And then, of course, the clouds building in throughout the evening, and we stayed cloudy. Uh, overnight for us. We're looking at our sky steadily over the next few hours to start to become mostly clear. Uh, but right now, things are still a little overcast. 55 the high for the day, quite a bit below average. We should have been closer to about 67. And we started the day off in the mid 30s. That clear sky early in the morning allowed us to cool down quite a bit overnight. Those overnight lows can also below average for us. Just a little cool. Our Doppler track right now is quiet. Showers to the southeast. Uh, but no rain for us sliding in overnight. And that cloud coverage is actually really going to break up and clear up for us as high pressure starts to shift in. And it's going to keep us pretty quiet overnight and for your Monday. Plan on sunshine tomorrow and pretty decent weather for the next few days. A slight chance for rain in the forecast, but we aren't looking at any severe weather sliding in at all and no major opportunities for any showers. So Monday we're quiet. By Tuesday we start off with sunshine and then Cloud coverage is going to increase throughout the day with the chance for some showers starting to build in from west to east later in the evening and overnight. That is going to be a later event for us. By Wednesday morning, we may still have a few light showers on the eastern edge of the state, but most of the rain will be gone. Wednesday afternoon, we are expecting partly sunny skies will clear up throughout the day on Wednesday. Temperatures overnight will fall to the upper 30s, so it will be a little cool early in the morning. A calm breeze expected for us for our overnight hours. By tomorrow afternoon, we are going to be in the middle 60s. 
for our afternoon highs, so a, a little closer to average for us. Heading into Tuesday morning, plan on sun early in the day, but then that rain chance starts to develop for us later in the evening. The good news, though, any afternoon plans should be just fine. Our early evening plans on Tuesday It's not till later on that that shower chance does start to come through for us. May hear a few rumbles of thunder, too, but some isolated thunderstorms possible late Tuesday into Wednesday. Overnight low of about 39, still below average, a little cool early in the morning, but as our skies become mostly clear, it is going to allow us to cool down just a little more for tomorrow. We're looking at a little more seasonable weather with a mostly sunny sky. So 65 for tomorrow, but we hop up to the 70s for Tuesday. We're looking at the low 70s for Tuesday afternoon with that shower chance coming in later in the day. Uh, overall, we are going to continue to see our temperatures climb uh, for the next several days. It's not going to be cool outside anymore for us. So that'll be nice to have a little more spring like weather. Wednesday and Thursday are going to include some sunshine by Friday. We have that shower chance coming back in for us. And unfortunately, that system for the weekend could bring a little more rainfall. Uh, we could see a little more accumulation with that, but there's some uncertainty as we look that far out into the forecast about timing uh, with that next weekend system coming on through. So at least during the week, though, we don't have to worry about anything too heavy right too now. Too bad. And those temperatures look like they're pretty seasonal. Yes, yes. We could take mid to upper 60s, of course, even into the I'll 70s. That would be fun. Yes. Thank you so much, Dana. <laughs> a Mother's Day matchup between NL Central rivals. Highlights coming up next in sports.
Well, the Badgers softball team heading to the NCAA tournament for the third straight year. Wisconsin finished the Big Ten tournament one round early, losing the semifinals to eventual champion Michigan. A tough road ahead, though. Badgers in the Oklahoma Regional. The Sooners are the overall number one seed. But first, Wisconsin will play Notre Dame on Friday night. The two teams last played each other on February 10th, 2013. The Badgers won 6-5. A Mother's Day matchup against the Brewers usually doesn't end well for the other team. The Brew Crew has a 33-19 and all-time record on Mother's Day, which is the best in Major League Baseball. Brewers down one nothing until the fourth inning. Jesus Aguilar gets through the gap in left field. Christian Yelich running on home, and it's a tie game. Stays that way until the fifth inning. Javi Baez going deep to right center. Chris Bryant scores, and the Cubs take the 2-1 to one lead. In the seventh, Bryant again, this time a two-run home run for some extra breathing room. Cubs take this game and the series 4-1, to one, the final score. The Bucks keeping their eyes glued to Game 7 of the other Eastern Conference semifinal between the 76ers and Toronto. And, oh man, this was a good one. This is all you really need to see. Tied to the final seconds of the game, Kawhi Leonard, as time expires, shoots, and then... Bounce, 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 bounce. Bucket. Toronto wins 92 to 90, the first game seven game winning buzzer beater in NBA history. Raptors will face the Bucks on Wednesday night in game one of the Eastern Conference Final at Five Star Forum. Sticking with the Bucks, how is Malcolm Brogdon going to progress in this series? Well, the Prez played 17 minutes in game five, his first game since March, putting up 10 points, three rebounds, and four assists. So not too bad after recovering from a right foot injury. But head coach Mike Boonholzer says he's got to keep on going. He needs more game minutes, more game action, and um, you know, I think we're going to, you know, plan to, uh, you know, I think uh, continue to increase Malcolm's workload and minutes and things like that as appropriate. But, um, you know, to say exactly how it's going to play out, um, you know, it's just, I think, step by step. The next one will be him playing a little bit more in game one. And some wonderful news for former Badger safety Dakota Dixon. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have signed him as their fourth tryout player. So that means he is signed to the team but hasn't made the final 53-man roster. Yet, that is. In his career at Wisconsin, Dixon put up 177 tackles and five interceptions in 51 games. He also made an impact off of the field, winning the Collegiate Man of the Year Award. Edgerton native Steve Stricker having quite a weekend at the Regents Tradition, the Champions Tournament in Birmingham, Alabama. That was him earlier today getting some putts in, but the final round was suspended today due to the wet weather down south. And the course won't be much better tomorrow, most likely very wet and soft. So how will that affect how Stricker plays? The same thing. Um, try to do the same things, you know, get the ball in play. You got to get in the fairway, you know. You want to be able to, I'm sure we're going to play it up, and uh, you want to be able to clean it give yourself a good lie and, and uh, give yourself a good opportunity to hit it into the green. So first thing first, get it in the fairway <laughs> yeah. and then, uh, you know, hopefully get some putts at it. So here's the current leaderboard for now. Stricker in the lead by two strokes. This is the fourth time in his career that he is the lead entering the final round. His last Champions Tour win was the 2018 Sanford International. And finally tonight, a truly special weekend for the family of New England Patriots wide receiver Julian Edelman. The three-time Super Bowl champion walked across the stage at graduation at Kent State. Now, Edelman started his degree in 2006, but said that he made a promise to his parents more than 10 years ago that he would finish it. And he did. He jokingly called himself a 13-year senior and also said it was really important for him to finish college to set a good example for his daughter. Edelman's degree is in integrative, integrative study, studies. rather. So that's always good to see that because it is really hard, you know, when you leave school early and you don't get a chance to finish your degree yeah. and you have a pro career, you come back and you still finish that. Really important, but really awesome to see. And I'm sure his parents at the time were like, sure, you're going to go back. Yeah. But he actually did. Yeah. You know, so he actually went back. That's a big accomplishment. Indeed. He kept his word. Yes. All right. Thanks so much. We'll be right back. No one.